So here we have the 29th. It was a Sunday. It was lovely out. I'll have the garage door open here in a minute. Uh, I started on 8-7, step 5, which was the construction of some cradles. Uh, the instructions actually show you creating cradles that are rigid and for conform basically directly to what your inspar ribs would look like. And I decided not to go that route. I actually went the route of a soft cradle. And you can see here I've got, you know, some two befores cut in half or one by ones over there on the other side and, and uh, strapping that everything just rests in. And it works really well. I went this route, and you'll see later, uh, because it allows me to kind of tilt the whole uh, assembly back and forth as I'm working into it, uh, working with it. It's not as rigid, uh, which was incredibly useful. The funny thing is they have you create these cradles as uh, the last step of 8-7, and then you don't actually use them until step five or six of eight dash eight. So there's several steps uh, that you have to get to before you'll use the cradles. And here you see me putting together um, the ribs, like going through and putting the nose, uh, the, no the front nose bars or ribs on, and then the inspar ribs above those. Uh, and it just, you know, again, nothing's difficult. A lot of click going on bits and then match drilling all the parts and going from there. And here you see me pulling the bluing off of the uh, four other pieces that I didn't realize I needed because I didn't fully read the instructions. And I talked about that in the last video. So I have to kind of go back a little bit and deburr and, and uh, get those ready to go. In some of the previous videos, I had talked about that I didn't really understand the deburring process and I wasn't really sure if it was necessary. And I actually found uh, through a suggestion, someone who, who mentioned it on the one of my YouTube posts, thank you, that uh, there's a really great post or, or um, article rather in the EAA magazine uh, February issue just about exactly that. And uh, I've since gone on and, and read a bunch more and see what other people do and Heck, I might not be deburring enough. I mean, some people, some people go crazy, and it's like every single piece has this high quality, smooth, you know, nickel chrome finish that that uh, they really go to town. And I'm not going into that much detail, and I probably should be. So I think going forward, as tedious as I find it. I'm going to do a lot better job. I'm going to go get some higher quality sandpaper and really get in there and uh, start working on those pieces. I mean, ultimately, this is about making the forever plane, right? And if pieces are falling off of it because I didn't deburr it, then, well, that's counter to what I want. And here's a picture of where I was in this process. Uh, those little boards holding it up was really handy. Kept it from sitting on the nose pieces itself. And here we are on to step five. So this is the part where uh, I have to remove the vinyl. And God, this sucks. There's got to be a better way to remove this stuff. Uh, I've tried, you know, rolling it. I've tried gently, you know, pulling it one way or, you know, using some other sneaky method of getting it off. And I just haven't been able to. Uh, I did hear I, I kind of cut down it and I was able to pull off smaller pieces. And so that was a lot better. Uh, you can see that, you know, it took a lot less time, but still getting those things off is just dreadful. Uh, and now you're gonna see the cradles come into use. Yay. This was really the first time I had tried to use them. So I wasn't sure. And I was hoping it was going to work out and it actually worked out really well. Uh, I, I had to, I realized at that point exactly how everything was connected and, and that I had put all those small clicos on the outside, uh, holding in the sides of the inspar ribs, thinking I was being clever, that's not going to work if I have to slide it down into the skins, duh. So, yeah, I had to undo that. But, you know, then it was just a matter of taking each nose piece off of that uh, assembly and then clicoing them on, and you can see that here. And through the magic of editing, suddenly my garage door is open because it was a nice day. It was warming up. I was out there in the morning. It's a little cool. And then uh, as the day progressed, I eventually opened the garage. Lots of uh, lots of putting Clecos onto the nose ribs. And I'll talk more about Clecos in a minute. Uh, believe it or not, you probably didn't order enough. I know I didn't. I can tell you, after getting up and down on the, that little stepladder I have many, many times, uh, some people talk about 
jigs that they've made for these parts that are, you know, you can swivel them. And I, I really appreciate that now, the ability to take each of these uh, pieces and be able to just turn it however you want, that's pretty handy. Um, and here I start the process of putting uh, all the pieces into uh, the horizontal stabilizer and click the skin on uh, before the final drill. And this is where I start to realize I don't have enough Clicos. Um, I know I ordered 325, uh, which is nowhere near enough. I mean, it's just not. Uh, there's more than 325 holes on one side of one skin. You know what I mean? Uh, and there are two skins here. So there are a lot of holes. And, I, and it gets, starts to get really thin where I had to go and spread them out, you know, every third or every fourth hole. Here's a picture where I've got on basically every other hole, and this is where I started to realize, oh wow, I don't have anywhere near enough. And I start to go back through and, you know, formulate a plan for being able to click all the, clico all the stuff together. I almost advise buying like another 150 of them. So now I'm on to 8-9. This is me working with the little stringers and getting those uh, deburred and cleaned. And I've actually gone back and cleaned them even more because they were really rough. I had to cut them upstairs on my bandsaw. Um, but get those inserted into the skin, uh, or inside rather, underneath the skin. It's kind of clever how those go in there. My initial impression was be, was that they were going to be just an incredible pain in the rear, and they actually aren't. Uh, in some ways, they make assembly uh, later on a lot easier because some of the holes just kind of line up nicely. Uh, again, I, I have to thank Vans. Uh, whatever effort they put into their matched drilling system uh, was 100% worth it. Thank you, Vans. Uh, it really rocks, and it's amazingly accurate, all things considered. So here, moving on to the next, which is step two of 8-9, which is put the uh, rear spar assembly on the top, Clico it in place. And then, of course, read the instructions and Clico everything together and spread out those Clicos because we're running out, and eventually we will start match drilling. Uh, suddenly I'm wearing my sweater because it started to get cold again. But uh, this is, you can see the thoughtful look on my face where I'm like, hmm, I don't have enough Clicos. What do I do? Yay, camera angle change. Uh, about that point I realized, you know, this camera was in a terrible position. There's no way in hell you could see what I was doing. And I'll try to be better about that, by the way. I'm trying to be more conscious of the camera. There's been, uh, over the last couple of days, I've been just trying to get things done. And I've been less concerned about filming it, which is uh, wrong. Sorry. And for the rest of this video, which is like another three minutes, um, I'm drilling all the holes. Keep in mind, this is one frame every second, I think is what I've got it set up here. And so it's quite a bit of time that it took me to do this. Uh, looking at my spreadsheet, step four of 8-9, which is what this is, took uh, a little over two hours. This whole video, uh, which is, you know, a little over 10 minutes long, is actually over six and a half hours of me working one Sunday, um, which is awesome, by the way. I mean, it was an eventful day. I, I made a thorough dent in my audiobook while out working on the plane and just had a blast. I, I really hope you're having a blast too. And, and I have to think that if you're still watching this, um, then you really want to do this uh, because this is one of those things that you really have to want to do. And it's just awesome. Um, my concern uh, initially when I got into this, and my wife's as well, to be fair, was that this was something that I was going to kind of start doing and then not really enjoy and kind of peter out and I'll have paid a whole bunch of money for parts that would never actually get built. And yeah, that's not going to happen. This is a hell of a lot of fun. And if, if I have to be completely honest, I think the part about this that is the least amount of fun is uh, blogging and, you know, making the post, making, making these videos. Um, it's a little tedious. It's, it's actually a lot tedious. Oh, by the way, right here, I'm using the angle uh, drill, which I didn't think I was going to use at all, to be honest. It was one of those pieces like, oh, I'm going to order this, but I know I'm never going to use it. Yeah, actually, you use it. And uh, where you need it, it's incredibly useful. Right there, I just had to, I had to pick up the whole thing, walk outside, flip it around, and walk it back inside. I can flip it around inside, uh, as you'll see in another video uh, later. Uh, I'm always like a week and a half behind on these videos, but it's just easier to just walk out the front, flip it around, walk out the back, or you know, come back in and place it back in the cradle. 
But anyways, what I was saying is uh, the, the hardest part about doing this is keeping up with his videos. I'm always behind. I've actually got like four days on my desktop, um, you know, several gigs of just raw video waiting to be turned into one of these videos. And it's just, it's, it's a bit tedious. Um, I'm still streamlining the process uh, and trying to, you know, stay excited about it, but the videos themselves suck. <laughs> so any, any positive comments where people are saying, please keep the videos that actually inspires me to keep doing it. So those of you who have said, so thank you. You're actually helping a great deal, but uh, there you go. Uh, this goes on for a few more minutes. The sun is now set, I believe, and it is, you know, on tonight and yep. Exciting. Anyways, guys, I'll talk at you later.